Good evening. <coughs> Welcome to the June 28th meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeal. I'd like to start out with a roll call. If each member would introduce himself, please. Jim Walsh. Vlad Nicolino. Jay Chatness. Gib Mendelson. Thank you. We do have a quorum, four of seven board members present, so we will proceed. First item of business is to approve the May 24th minutes of the zoning board. Any comments? I have one on page four, uh, the last paragraph, judgment item number one. Uh, all services, it states the time. Uh, we did uh, declare a Monday through Friday limitation on that, like that added to the minutes, please. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. And uh, I have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? All in favor? Thank you. First item on the agenda is to hear the administrative appeal of Paul Coulomb and John Fatula and Audrey Fatula of the uh, code enforcement officer's issuance of the building permit for two reef road properties. Uh, those two appellants and appellees have again requested, have jointly requested a tabling of this item until next month. Do you have any further information on that? I don't. Regarding that, they, but they did request. Yes. Ned, can we continue to uh, maintain that as an item? Well, or for how long should we? Hopefully, if nothing gets resolved, I'll have to find out what, what, what we can, whether we can or not. Okay. So. Uh, a request has been made by the appellants and appellee to table this item. Any discussion? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess that, the, that question that you posed, do you carry this or do you just, it, does it get withdrawn if it carries over from one meeting to another? I'm not sure what your question is. Well, my question is, does, you know, to, to just carry it from one agenda to the next, should it just be withdrawn until such time as they wish to bring it forward? Well, if you withdraw, then you have to go back through and reapply and pay another fee. Okay. Um, I, this is unusual in that both have agreed. Uh, nobody's, so nobody's, yeah. there isn't one party that's saying, I want to carry it, and the other one doesn't. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I guess I don't really see the harm in carrying it. Okay. Um, that's, that's fine. I just need that. I need that clarification. Thank you. Okay. Do I hear a motion to table this item as discussed? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. <clears throat> Welcome. Next item on the agenda is to hear the request of Randall S. Hell, 10 Oakwood Road, tax map U24, lot 18, for a conditional use permit to have an accessory dwelling unit within the existing single family dwelling. Uh, Mr. Hell, will you or one of your representatives please come forward, introduce yourself state your current address and present your application. Hello, my name is Randall Hale. I live at 10 Oakwood Road, Cape Elizabeth. And I'm requesting a, uh, an additional dwelling unit to be added to my house. If you would, would you, uh, you have a copy of your application, I believe. Yes, I do. Sir. Would you mind going over some of the, explain to us your uh, existing property and your intents for the uh, accessory dwelling unit, if you would, please, sir. Okay, the, uh, the house itself is all intact. It's a single family home right now. We're not gonna 
do any modifications to the outside structure. The only modification is going to be to the inside to add a kitchen in one end of the house. So it will have like an in-law apartment for my father-in-law or mother-in-law and they'll have their own kitchen because our schedules really don't you know, coincide. So they'll be able to cook their meals when they want to. We can cook ours when we want. There'll be no change, like I said, no change to the house at all. It's going to stay exactly the way it is. In interior or exterior? The only interior change will be adding a kitchen in the other end of the house. And who is, you stated, your, the people who this is intended for? It's intended for uh, my father-in-law or mother-in-law. Any questions from board members? And no change in the footprint, footprint of the building at all? None, none whatsoever. You currently, is that in your front yard or in the front yard of this lot, there's a for sale sign? Is that your? Uh... Yes, we put it on the market back uh, May, I guess, the end of May. And uh, may I ask your intention of going through this uh, procedure, well, both the cost and the, and the time involved, to, well, uh, if you're intending was, on selling the property? Well, we put it on the market, number one, because the market was so good at the time. You know, you make money when the sun shines. So we haven't had any, haven't even had an offer on the property yet. So. We've been wanting to get a kitchen anyways, you know, for our mother-in-law and father-in-law. So we've been meaning to do this for a long time. We <coughs> haven't had a chance. How long have you lived in the property? Uh, five years. Five years. And you, you currently live in the main property yourself with your family, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Or in the main unit? The main unit. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> Board? Well, if if you um, if you were to receive an offer on the property that was uh, acceptable to you, would you accept it? If it was what I'm asking. So, so your intention you, you you have an ongoing <coughs> intention to sell this property. If it sells by the first of August, yes. If not, we're going to take it off the market because we don't want to move our kids during the school year. Is, is it currently listed with this proposed change? Absolutely not, no. So should it, well, I, and not that, you know, I'm, I'm in the real estate business, so I don't know whether I should even address that question, but it seems to me it should be disclosed one way or the other that you're actually doing something like this at this point. I mean, somebody comes in there, well, two weeks from now, it's actually a different house if you got permission to do this tonight, is it not? In a sense, yes, because it'll have another kitchen. So, I, I most buyers never fail to remind you of all the attributes of the home you've got. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I just it just it's just kind of interesting that it's for sale and it's and you're actually planning to make a change, and what's currently marketing at the mo moment is something different than what. I just it just a, it's it just needs some clarity. That's all. <clears throat> I mean, part of the reason is the layout of the house, you know. You yeah. But if it's going to have another kitchen, if it's going to have another kitchen in it, is it right? Know, what's the what's the implied value? It's going to have the same entrance, right? Common yep. entrance. That's not changing. That's so. not changing.
Where are your in-laws living now? They're living with us. They live with you currently. Currently living with us. Any other questions or comments from the board members of the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Huff. We now open the floor to public comment. If anybody in the audience has any uh, uh, comments in support of the applicant and his uh, desires, would you please come forward? And if you would, state your name, your current address. My name is Kenneth Ford. I live 10 Oakwood Road. I'm Randy's father-in-law. And it is for us that they want to make this change. Uh, my wife is employed and works uh, kind of crazy hours, and with both my parents in the nursing home and hers, uh, we're on the run all the time. And it isn't, it's very difficult to run back and forth as far as meals are concerned. You have to go through their house if you want to do anything, so we just want to do this. This was our intent for a long time. It just hasn't been done. We, we owned the house for... Uh, we bought the house in 1972 and sold it to them in 2000. It'll be five years this year. So it's for our convenience. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments in favor of the applicant? <clears throat> I'm uh, Gary Beckwith. I live at uh, 13 Oakwood Road. Uh, my wife Jane and I uh, purchased our house on Oakwood Road in 1956. So we've watched uh, the neighborhood grow and change, and we've been aware of the changes in the Hale house. Uh, watching the uh, first the addition of the closing in of the breezeway, and then the addition of the uh, the apartment at the end of the house. Um, over the years, each piece of work has been done with care and meeting the codes of the town. Uh, as you look at the map, it is a double lot. Uh, if you know the property, uh, it has um, quite an adequate parking lot. I've looked down there at times and seen uh, seven different vehicles parked <laughs> safely off the road. Um, <clears throat> and I think, uh, and knowing the fogs and Mr. Hale for a number of years, I know that they uh, have thought about this carefully and will do a, a responsible job. I have, as a neighbor, have no objections. I would like to see them move forward with the project. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else in support of the applicant? <coughs> Anyone in the audience have uh, comments in opposition to the applicant? Hearing none, we'll close the public forum portion of this and open it to the board for discussion. Just have a question for Mr. Smith. Um, on the notice that went out, it shows the applicant's lot as this crosshatch area. You see that? And when I try to match that up to the photograph, I'm a little confused by it because it seems to, is that, is it lot 19 is the subject? Is that 19 area that's not crosshatch include the applicant's presence? I see. No, I don't think so. It's 19. It's a double. Really okay. It's just a double. Just answer my question. <clears throat> just turn it Thank the you. other way. That's all. You, just, you have to just turn it a different perspective. That's all. Turn him around in his chair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in the uh, testimony that was just given, um, there's a comment about from a uh, neighbor at 13 that there was an apartment. So I guess my question is, is there an apartment in this unit already and the difference is that they're going to put a kitchen in? Is that? 
To my knowledge, there is an apartment several years ago. I did get a complaint that, that there was a separate unit, and uh, as a result, I believe you removed the kitchen, uh, yep. removed the stove and the refrigerator because they weren't aware that that was an issue until I visited. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Any other comments? Our ordinance does support the creation of an accessory dwelling unit uh, if certain criteria are met. And this does, this is uh, a conditional use permit. It falls under that uh, description for an accessory dwelling unit from a size and floor area coverage, it does appear to meet all the criteria. Parking is apparently not an issue. There is adequate parking. Apparently, it is being used currently as desired without the benefit of a kitchen. Comments were both supportive. Any other comments? There are five items to vote on this, all five of which must be approved to approve the conditional use permit. We'll start, we'll start with item number one. We'll vote on the five items one at a time. Item number one, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item number two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, admissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item number three, the proposal will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All those in favor? <coughs> All in favor, zero opposed. Item number four, the proposed site plan and layout is compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item number five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have, need not have a similar design appearance or architect. Uh, that is not applicable. We will vote though. All those in favor? All in favor. Zero opposed. All five items have been approved. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I move the uh, approval of the application for Randall S. Hale for um, a conditional use permit to create a 600 square foot accessory dwelling unit within the current footprint of the existing building at that location uh, with the conditions as set forth on the um, proposed uh, draft findings that have been put forth, which include that there shall be one dedicated parking space for the accessory dwelling unit, no home occupation or home business uh, shall be permitted now or in the future. A single family and accessory dwelling unit shall be held in the same ownership and an attested copy of a conditional use permit shall be filed with the Cumberland County Council <coughs> of Deeds within 90 days of approval. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Mr. Hale, your application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Good evening. Good. New business item number two to hear the request of see your ground of 239 Spurwink Avenue tax map U27 lot 20 for a conditional use permit to operate a home business specifically a psychotherapy therapist office uh, if you would I assume that you're Mrs. Grant I am. Good. Would you please introduce yourself state your current address and present your application for my name is Celia Grand, and I live at 239 Spurwink Ave in Cape Elizabeth. Would you mind speaking up? A oh, bit? I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's a therapist thing. <laughs> um, I um, am applying to move my practice into my home, which would require an addition uh, to my current structure. If you would, would you further describe the nature of your business, the desires of your application or your modification and so on and so forth? Basically, the items that you filled out okay. in your application, if you would describe that for the benefit of the audience here and at home, please. Okay. Um, I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I practice psychotherapy, and I work mostly with adults and couples, um, and that's about one-third of my practice. The other third of my practice is that I provide consultation to other therapists in, um, from Maine, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts um, based on my specialty. And the third part of my practice is that I teach um, uh, currently uh, in the Northeast, but soon to be international um, in a modality of psychotherapy. So my practice is actually going to um, get a little bit smaller than what it is currently in terms of client contact and increase in my teaching and uh, consultation practice. Um, so a third of my practice is working with individuals who have, most of my clients are high functioning, have life problems, um, my specialty is working with attachment issues. So I work with people who um, pretty much are high functioning but don't really feel a sense of worthiness or uh, um, being able to function, feel like they, they deserve what they get, what they have in their life. And a lot of times in how they relate to other people. So that really shows up in relationships. Um, and then the other third of my practice is consultation. I have a specialty in trauma, um, working with adults who were traumatized as children, who, um, again, are fairly high functioning. And there's two uh, state-of-the-art modalities that I am a teacher in. And other therapists come to learn from me how to, how to work with people with these uh, modalities. And then the third of my practice is actually not going to be in the home at all, which is I'm going to be on the road. So I want to move home because um, it would just make my life easier. <laughs> Could you, uh, you used in your letter, mm -hmm. descriptive letter, you used the term high-functioning adults as your Mm -hmm. patients. Could you describe that for the benefit of yeah. all of us, please? Um, what I mean by that are most of my clients, all of my clients are people like you and I who hold a job, um, you know, have children, have a full life, and um, have had life problems that have come in, you know, that have come their way, and they don't understand why these problems are hounding them or uh, sort of living in them. And so, um, you know, they're not people who have a major mental illness. I don't work with people who, um, you know, have criminal records or uh, have um, personality disorders that uh, prohibit me from ever feeling safe myself. So I say so they do not. They do not. They do not. No. So, um, and I'm also um, known in this area 
And fortunately for me, I don't have to bill health insurance. And so that leaves people who can afford to come to see me as my client base. Does that make sense? On your letterhead, you have a number of licensed mm -hmm. letters. Would you please explain each yep. one of those? The LCSW is that I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Okay. And the BCD, that's a credential um, saying that I'm, board, I'm a board certified diplomat in clinical social work. I, um, what that means is I've reached a level of um, proficiency in my profession that I'm recognized um, at a diplomat level. Um, I had to get recommendations for that credential and I had to take an exam. Um, and so that's how I got that. And the PA is that I'm incorporated. And um, when you're incorporated, I'm a C Corp. And when you're incorporated as a professional, that you have to be a professional association versus an Inc. That's just legally. You were the only person involved in this corporation? Yes. Mm -hmm. You will work by yourself? So. I will work by myself, right. Currently, I share space with other therapists, but I have my own private practice, and I'm incorporated only in, you know, for myself. Where are you practicing today? My office currently is on Forest Ave in Portland. And you intend on closing that office? I do intend on closing that. And moving it ex exclusively to your residence? Well, there'll be a transition period um, for the year uh, till next June, because I have a lease. Um, so I'll probably transition once the unit is built. Thank you. Any comments from the board? Questions? Yeah, um, I have some questions. With respect to the application, you indicate you would like to see six or seven clients per day, which would be 12 to 14 trips per day. Yeah. Do we have any evidence of what the uh, annual, current annual daily traffic on that road is? I'm not sure what the daily traffic is, but what I did do one Saturday while I was doing yard work was I stood in front of my house and counted traffic on um, June 18th from 1.30 to 2 p.m. It was um, a cloudy day and there was 115 cars that drove by in 30 minutes. And so um, my experience is that, and as I watched that traffic, um, I didn't realize until I watched that traffic that off of Pleasant Avenue, there's a lot of car, there's a lot of houses up in that little nook. And so there's a lot of traffic that goes in and out. Also on Spurwink, as you well know, we have the dump. We have Perputic. Um, there are multiple home businesses. Um, my neighbor across the street has a home business, and you know, there's a lawyer, there's landscapers, there's um, the medical center, there's Maxwell's Farm, there's Jordan's going to Jordan's Farm off of Wells Road, um, and there's uh, a school on the other side of Spurwink the Agacusco School. And so there's a lot of businesses currently on Spurwink as well as a lot of residential homes that go in and out. Bruce, do we have any data at all we can rely on <coughs> on that no. road? No. no. <coughs> um, and it sounds, from your application, it appears you, you do not want to have signage for your business, right? No, I do not. And so if we put a condition not to have signage, you can live with that? That would be fine. Um, no, because I don't have signage now. Oh, I have, I'm like a very vague on a door, but a client doesn't you know, want to come and see, you know, they're going to pull up, people are going to pull up to my house and say, Celia Grand, psychotherapist. You know, it kind of breaches one's confidentiality. So I have absolutely no problem with no signage as a condition. And then, as I understand it, your application anticipates some improvements to your property to accommodate That's correct. a new office, which would be a new garage. I'm going to, I've been wanting to do a garage. Yep. And so I'm going to add a garage and um, have the office over the garage. But I want to do an attached garage so that then there's going to be dormers up 
because it's a tiny, this house is a very tiny little two bedroom ranch. Right. And so I'm going to add a bedroom up on the, where the dormers are. Um, Which would be the office? No, that would be my That's bedroom. That would be a bedroom. And then the office would be over the garage. That's what, I'm sorry. That's what, that's what I'm yeah. the garage. Oh. And so the entrance to the office, I'm sorry? <clears throat> office is upstairs. Yeah, the entrance will be, if you see the door to the right of the garage door, that would be the entrance, and there'll be a stairwell that goes up to the second floor, which would where the office would be, and a small waiting room, and a half bath. And as far as the, <clears throat> is the paved driveway area going to change? I have to, I'm going to add um, a space. Turn around? Yeah. I'm going to add, uh, um, let me see if, I don't know if you have this, where the dwelling is. When I bought the house, there was a lot of pavement. It went all the way in the front of the whole house, and it was really a sightly view. Um, so I had that pavement, part of it, um, chipped out and left a turnaround there and that turnaround I'm going to extend down and then put landscaping around so it looks. So there's this line drawing here and it says add extra parking I assume yeah. that's where the space is going. Yeah. So it'll be parallel to the current to the current driveway and then people could pull in and then pull out. Will they be able to turn around so that when they come out of the driveway, they're facing forward yes. to the road? Yes, that's my intention. Have you looked at the question of all, at all of how much, because what is the speed limit on Spurwing? There? Is it 35. Uh, tends to be, people tend to go along there with a pretty good clip. Yep. Um, have you looked at the question of how much visibility there is when somebody pulls up to the road to look right, to look left? The visibility is not good if you back out, I'll be honest. Um, if turn but if you turn around and come out, the visibility is... Can you see both ways? You can see both ways. Not foliage <laughs> there or something blocking the view? Well, there's a tree there. But like I said, if you come out, head out, the visibility is fine. It's really backing out, you know, because you're backing out and you're looking, you know, both ways. And yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, if people move along pretty good at the street. And just a question for Bruce. Uh, on her plan here, on this drawing, she's got a 12-foot setback on the garage. Does that work? Which one? On the plot plan? Uh, side setback is um, 10 feet. 10 feet over there? It's in an RC district, so it's 10-foot setbacks on a non-conforming lot. Yep. I have no further questions. Thank you. Other than the addition, there's no enlargement of the existing house. Is that correct? I'm sorry? Other than the addition, the existing house, is it going to be enlarged in any way on that? Well, the, there, there's going to be dormers. The, the roof will The roof will be. The house will not be enlarged. The footprint won't be enlarged, but the, I, I, I think I'm getting this right we'll be because I don't know anything three. about construction. Go ahead for more space. Yeah, I'm going to have more space above, but the footprint is the actual, yeah. In, um, in, the, in the application, you uh, talk about the number of clients max per day, and then you uh, you mentioned the possibility of groups. Mm -hmm. Is there enough parking to do a group? Uh, well, I've taken care of that. I have my groups go from three people to up to six. And the people that I have six, I am going to sublet space in Portland. I have other therapist friends that I'm going to do those larger groups at their, their space. But I do believe I'll have enough parking even if I did want to do it. I do believe there's going to be enough parking. Okay. So your current intention is to limit the groups to three, uh, three vehicles per session? Yeah. How many parking spots do you, will you have there? 
Three? No, I think I'm going to have about five or six. Because the way that I'm, how I'm going to add will fit three, and then there could be a parallel, like three, and the, the driveway is fairly long. Are you the only person in the house that utilizes a vehicle? Yes. Is there currently on street parking? Does that take place in your vicinity? Do Is there on street parking? On the side of the street? Not on Spurwink, there's not. No. No. There's I there's parking on Pleasant. There's I believe people park on Pleasant, which is, you know, <coughs> three uh, house on three houses from Pleasant. Well, in terms of the group um, piece though, in terms of scheduling, I mean if you were to do back to back sessions like that, you wouldn't have enough parking. Is there a time between sessions? I mean, not trying to get into how you schedule your business, but it, it, could, it could involve some problems with bringing... Well, if I do groups, that would be a problem, and I would, prob I would, you know, I would have to schedule in a way that it doesn't interfere because someone coming to my house and there's no parking yeah. for my client, it doesn't make sense for me to back it, go back to back like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So I'd probably give, you know, a half hour in between. How long are your typical appointment times? Uh, my session times with clients uh, is an hour, 50 minutes to an hour, and my groups are an hour and a half. So if you appointed six to seven clients per day, as indicated on your application, they would could be back to back, is that yes. correct? Um, well, my hours right now are 10 to 6, so that's what? That's a eight hour day. So I do go back to back, but if I have like an individual client coming in, they could park and the client before could actually leave. You know, two people can park. Well, there'll be enough parking for two cars, one coming in and one leaving. So I can do back to back that way. Mm -hmm. It just only presents a problem if I have a group right. and then have Another a client group. coming in. Bruce, I'm sorry, which zone was this? Excuse me? C. C. Uh, you said part of your job description would be training. Would you be doing on-site training in your house? No, my training is all um, out of state right now. Is where? Out of state. Okay. So no training would take place? No, like right, right now I train in, I'm training in Boston and um, soon to be D.C. Would you be, as far as patient acquisition, would you ever be using any type of advertising? The only place I currently advertise is in my professional newsletter which is through the um, National Association of Social Work in, uh, for this, just for the state of Maine. Um, because part of what I do is, um, which is a volunteer thing, is uh, run some meetings, workshops. And so that's the way that I advertise the workshops for low fee workshops for therapists. So it's, that's all volunteer based. So I advertise myself in that newsletter. And that would typically be to other other professionals. Distribution of that it newsletter. It just only goes to social workers. It's a newsletter within all the social workers in Maine. Get this newsletter. <coughs> Which would not be your client base or potential client. Base. No, they're not my client base. So your, your patients would be typically acquired through referral, is that correct? That's true. And usually word of mouth. And what? Word of mouth. And you've been practicing for how long, did you say? Um, let's see. 17 years post-grad and 20, 
three since undergrad. I have a bachelor's in social work. I graduated in 1982. Um, and then I went to Boston College um, in 86 to 88. So I, I've been a practicing therapist since 1988, outpatient therapist. Uh, our ordinance does condone an in-home business. And the reason why we are asking all these questions uh, is that we, because we are required to review these applications, we want to ensure that we don't create, by our approval, a situation that might go be contradictory to what the ordinance uh, mm -hmm. states. And one of the primary concerns is traffic and traffic flow and parking. Uh, we certainly all have the right to park vehicles in and around our property. Uh, one of our concerns is that, that that doesn't become excessive because of our approval. And that's why we're, we're especially concerned about parking and, and traffic flow, as a number of those questions have, have been. Uh, is it, you stated your hours would be 10 to 6, Monday through Friday. Is, is, is it important that you carry on till 6 o'clock? Is there a what? Is it important that your business carry on until 6 o'clock? Um, well, I only, right now, only have three days, three five o'clock appointments a week. In the summer, I um, often leave at five o'clock. I only work till five. So, um, so I only, like, I only have three appointments till five. In I mean, till six. In what? I only have, so it's only three hours a week. It's not Mondays and Fridays I don't work till five. Fridays I don't work usually after two at the latest if I have to. And, and Mondays I only work till five o'clock. And are your, would you describe your appointment times as being <clears throat> fairly precise? Would, would a, an appointment that starts at five, would it for sure be through at six? Uh, or do these typically run over, run short, or um, how do your appointments? They typically run till six o'clock. I mean, I don't. I mean, I only run over if I have to, but it's not a common practice to run over. So the nature is not that it would need to run over. Right. That's correct. Where it fits. Any other questions from board members? <coughs> I guess several several questions in a matter of view, if I might. Let's see, Ms. Grant. Let's go look at that. Just to to uh, I guess revisit the entire application. The reason why we keep on asking the same questions, and I did read your application, but I just in my own mind, um, I'd like to ask several questions again, and then and, sure. and then tell you what my thinking is at. Uh, one of them, you're not going to be employing anybody according to your application. That's correct. There will be no other employees. Uh, we, we talked about the traffic volume on Spurwink Avenue. Uh, your your business isn't going to be producing any uh, biohazardous materials or fumes, no. any noises. No. Nope. And you talked about signage. Well. There will be no signage. Um, and there's going to be no outdoor storage of any materials for your practice. No. Nope. Um, currently, the other two uh, issues are, one is you have to provide parking uh, in my interpretation of the code for a residential dwelling is a minimum of two spaces, and I believe it's nine by 18 feet, allowing for a turnaround. And I see by a new plant, I think it's going to be nine by 19. But from the road, when I drive by now, I don't think you have the existing driveway as the house stands today to allow for the two cars to park adequately. Okay, so, so you have my house in your mind's eye? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a turnaround part mm -hmm. that's are currently there. That was part of a e previous existing parking space that went to the front of the house. I'm going to take, what I want to do is take what's currently there, and there's grass 
there now and then just pave asphalt that, but not right to the road because there's a, there's a lilac bush there, mm -hmm. close to that lilac bush so that it's, there's, it's, there's enough pushback off from the road and then that becomes a parking space in. Does that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess, but I'm, part of the problem is we look at the house today and if we look at the parking space of the home today, and if we look at the square, if you would open an office in the existing room, right, you wouldn't have the, the percentage of, you'd be over the 20% of the house. You can't have more than 20% of right, the Right, for the business, right. So the, for this conditional permit to be approved, you would have to make these changes in the property. And That's right. To satisfy. That's right. Okay. Um, the other question I do have, again, coming back to parking, is, is with the group, ther group therapy. And that is, um, potentially, I think if you have more than a combination of two overlaps, I think it's going to be difficult to do group therapy in your home. Um, I think if you have an individual coming and you have overlap, you'll have, I, I, in my mind's eye, I see two parking spots. And if they're overlapping, you have to do some creative uh, office scheduling uh, right. Not to have it overlapping, because I think that potentially might be, if there were three or four cars parked in that driveway, mm -hmm. I think that would be a little bit out of character with the with the neighborhood, and maybe a little bit dangerous as well, trying to get in and out of the property. Well, I wouldn't schedule an individual client after having a group there at least a half hour, because there'd be no place for them to park. And then it would it's just not make sense to have everybody run out to get their cars out while someone else is coming in. I mean, I'm a professional, you know, it's, this isn't like a party. <laughs> so, um, you know, I would want, you know, when my clients come to me, you know, I want their safety, you know, their safety coming in and out of my driveway. I don't want the liability and I don't want the car accident. I work a lot with car accidents actually, so I know what happens. And so safety is an issue. And then if someone's coming, you know, to an office, you want them to feel like they're comfortable, that it'll be comfortable. And, you know, when you go to talk to somebody about your problems, you want some things to be a given, like it's going to be safe, it's going to be okay, it's not going to be a hassle. So I have to, just as a business person, not even in a parking person, I have to think about what's best for my clients. Because if I don't make my home, my home office a place where people want to come, I, you know, and also to get people to come to Cape Elizabeth, because believe it or not, coming over the bridge for a lot of people is a big, you know, condition to come see me. So I have to make my space a place where they want to come to, as well as come on my reputation. So if I have the reputation like, oh yeah, she's a great therapist, but boy, it's a pain to go see her and it's a pain to get in and out of her house and you know and I don't bill health insurance I'm losing a client base mm -hmm. so I have to think of it as a business person in addition to what the town wants okay. thank you can I add something also I um, in my you know quest to do this I went and spoke to my neighbors, except for one who Bruce just gave me an email from, because uh, I couldn't find them, I couldn't see them. All of a sudden, now I know why. <laughs> um, and so, but I did speak to the three neighboring um, um, neighbors, and I, I have a um, like a little uh, statement that. I told them exactly what I was doing and why I was doing it and how I was doing it. I showed them the plans of my, um, of the, the new structure. I a answered any questions regarding my client base and um, asked them to sign this letter to support um, my endeavor. And so, um, my neighbors to the right and to the left of me have both signed and um, two of them are here today um, from one of the two and then a person across the street. So I don't know if this would be helpful for you to see if you want to see this or 
We'll be happy to pass it okay. now. In your business, are you at all involved with either storing or dispensing any type of medications at all? No. Okay. Mm -mm. I didn't think I'm not so. licensed to do that. I didn't think so. I wanted to know for the record. <clears throat> Any other questions from board members? Come yeah, on. I just wanted to express my concerns. Um, I fully support your efforts. The one thing that does trouble me about that road is that it's very hilly. People really buzz along pretty quickly along it. There's no parking on that road. And in my estimation, it's one of the more dangerous roads to pull out onto around town. So, you know, regardless, if this is approved, assuming it's approved, you know, I would certainly encourage you to do whatever you can to make people aware of that danger and ask them to turn around and go out in the street Absolutely. first. And also, um, so that, you know, I would encourage you to do whatever you can because we'd hate to see a, a, an accident over there. And then the other thing is um, uh, our duty is to rule based upon the evidence that we have before us. And the presumption or the, the fallback, the safe harbor, so to speak, is if we approve you to allow 10 trips per day and you've asked for um, as I understand it, slightly more than that, 12 to 14. And my understanding is we need evidence of the traffic count uh, above what we've currently, you've, for, to establish the sufficient volume of traffic to justify going beyond the threshold. So, I mean, unless other people feel, uh, see evidence that I'm not seeing, I don't see any evidence that would justify us to go beyond the, the, the 10 trips per day, which would be five client visits per day. Now, it doesn't mean you can't always come back and amend and present the evidence to establish a higher number, but based upon, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable that based upon watching traffic for a half hour, we've established the evidence sufficient to justify higher than that. Um, I don't mean to contend, but it's confusing to me because the first part of your statement is saying that it's a busy road, one of the busiest in Cape Elizabeth, and then not having evidence that it could justify four more trips a day. Then that what's do you know what I'm saying? Like so, if the trips are ten, point, but the I think the standard is two percent maximum allowable increase for the business is two percent of the current annual daily traffic or 10 trips a day, whichever is larger. And um, so the, as I understand it, Bruce, correct me if I'm wrong, we're supposed to, in order to go over the 10 trips a day, how many cars per day do we need to establish or going down that road? Well, I think it's a matter of, I mean, how many, how many cars, how many cars would, would one have to have to get to 14 vehicle trips, and if it's obvious that 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 meets that standard, then I don't think you need to do a traffic count. If it's well, and and what is the multiple? Is it two percent? You have to in order to go over 10, you have to have two percent of 100 is two trips per day. Two percent of a thousand is 20 trips per day. So what do you have to show that it's have, right. that it's 500 trips per day? Uh, if I'm and the other mistaken, piece, 14 trips would be, uh, if 14 trips is 2%, then 700 trips is 100%. So. Do we, but we don't have any data on that road? I, they may have been some studies done, but I, I, do I don't have that access to that information. Is there a source you can look to to establish that? I, there hasn't been any businesses that would, would have, Gathered that makes such as Hannibal or Shaw's or something. When the school did its modifications, were there it, were there traffic studies submitted? I mean, that was a major I don't change from a church to a school, and no. I want no, there's no documentation in that file. No. no. So the school didn't need to do a traffic count. No.
Well, we could give you the number of golf uh, rounds that are played at Proputic. That might help you with at least how many folks are. Uh, <laughs> that's you know. a good way to join it. I mean, that's that's one source of information we probably could could get easily. We we'll tell you how many cars. Uh, well, I, I think on that any given day. On you know, any given day. You've met the 700 right there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you just use that number, you you definitely. And then if you took the transfer center and figured that out on a. You know, and the sales at Maxwell's. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, it well, probably... I think there's a, there's a reason for the 2%, and that's when there's an issue with a road that's not necessarily a collector or arterial or something. It's, mm. a, it's a local road, and that's where it becomes a lot more mm. crucial. Mm. Uh, or if she was asking for 100 customers a day, uh, then even on this road, that might be an issue for traffic. So I think you have to look at the situation and the traffic that's already generated, and, and if it's obvious it's not going to exceed that, then I don't think that's an issue. But So you think it's, we're comfortable assuming that there's at least 700 trips on that road a day? I would think that's a logical assumption. Can you require that they come out face first, though? I mean, I, I owned the house at 2 Pleasant Avenue on the corner for the last three years, and it is a difficult street. Prolezen Ave is difficult. The parking on the right across from my house was difficult. You couldn't get around the corner. It is a very, very um, a difficult road right at the section where you happen to have your home. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. Is there a way that we can require that? Mr. Glenel's uh, statement that strongly encouraged, I would think that the applicant would. That's as far as you can go? Well, you can, you can require it, but you can't. You know, she can't control her client yeah. when she we should we close her down because the client said that she had that person had to turn around. You know, I, I guess that would be kind of a dangerous. Yeah. Okay. I just it is it is a tough road. And I don't know who would police that either. I mean, you know, that's I, not in I the know job description. Ticket or no. For that. <laughs> what a speed on that driveway. <laughs> And so just to follow up on the, on the um, group sessions, your, your intention is that if you have a group session on one day, you're still going to limit your total vehicle uh, um, clients to seven per day? Yes. Any other questions, comments, or the applicant? Thank you. We may come back to you in a moment. Okay. We may ask you to come back up. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks. We'll now open the floor to public comment. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor of the applicant, will you please come forward? State your name and your current address, please. Hello, Mr. I'm Jane Slovin. I live in Portland at 12 Merriam Street, and I'm a colleague of Celia's. I've known her for, I think, eight years now. I'm a clinical social worker. I've been in private practice for 20 years. Before that, I practiced law for about seven. Um, and um, I just want to say that Celia's coming to the area has been um, tremendously helpful for the clinical community because of the skills that she has brought. And um, so that's really what I want to say. I want to say also that her character is wonderful, um, that as a clinician, the work she does has been amazing, that she's galvanized a whole segment of the clinical community around working with the particular protocol. She uses EMDR and trauma treatment. Um, she's single-handedly trained a, an enormous number of clinicians. Um, we now have a local um, group of clinicians that meets, that has um, local conferences twice a year and other people that come into Portland, um, bigger names in that community um, who have presented. And what that's done in general for people in this area, I think, has been tremendous. So the everyday kind of traumas that many people experience, like car accidents, can leave people with fears about getting back in the car or um, hyper uh, reactions when somebody in front of them is, is stopping. Um, those kinds of 
issues are dealt with wonderfully with this particular protocol along with all sorts of other traumas that people experience in their life the consequences of medical emergencies police officers in the line of duty many other professionals who experience trauma in different ways and so I know that Celia's groups and particularly the one she's probably talking about here her groups are generally for other clinicians who are doing training so that's what I have to say thank you for the opportunity thank you for the character reference any other comments thank you my name is Jonah Rosenfield and my wife Kristen and I live at 243 Spurwink Avenue which is the house just to the south of where Celia lives it's the house on the side where she would be building her addition I just want to say a couple things about Celia while while we're here and number one is that when my wife and I moved into our house in 2001 the people that were living in what is now Celia's house I believe were renting the house and it was a fairly run-down tiny house and the first thing that Celia did was make huge improvements into the way the house looked and she had a lot of landscaping and an interior work and painting and all this kind of stuff that just made it a really cute little cute little house and we've known since she's moved in that she's wanted to expand the house and and make it more of a right now it's just a single story four or five room ranch and we've known that she's wanted to make more improvements and my wife and I feel very comfortable with the types of things that she's done to the house so far and what she would do in the future another thing I want to say is that Celia isn't just a neighbor but she's also become a friend of ours when we're out of town she looks at our house when she's out of town we look at her house and it makes me feel very comfortable to know that she would be spending more time in her house if she moved her home office there my wife is gonna have a baby in August and so it's kind of nice knowing that somebody like Celia would be next door doing stuff and I just have just want to let you know that I have full faith in her as a person as a professional and from what I've seen as a home decorator and improvement person to do do things that would be very consistent with the area and actually improve the area that's all thank you I have a question you're the property the immediate south I believe so yeah okay you're adjacent to could you describe your feel for the traffic back I'm glad that you mentioned that because that was a major topic of discussion yeah I'm glad that you mentioned that because I wanted my last plea to be that if you don't do a car number study please do a speed survey you do what a speed survey if possible yeah the first thing the first thing that our neighbors Jim and Pat across the street told us was never back out of your driveway when we bought it from the Davidson's who lived there before us and when they see us backing out of the driveway they actually come over and and chastise us there are there are a lot of cars that come through we do still feel it's we moved up from Boston in 2001 so it does still feel like a rural rural road but there are a lot of cars that go on the road it's not it's not a tremendous number but it's certainly a lot more than what 14 extra trips would do my major concern is the speed what about sight vision from her driveway right in your since your neighbor directly next door do you is line of sight vision an issue for you for me backing for me backing out it's an issue we have a rhododendron bush that's on the on the south side of our driveway as we're pulling out but then it's clear all the way through Celia's front of her lawn to I think another bush on the other side of hers so we have very good vision on the on the on the north side or on the left side but it does turn the road does turn right before Celia's house but again I honestly don't think it's the number of cars that's an issue but the speed of cars an issue thank you very much thank you you any other positive comments comments in favor anyone like speak in opposition to the applicant please come forward my name is Brian Ray I live at 20 at 226 Frank Avenue I believe it's lot 43 B it doesn't quite show it on the map I'm not really against the the variants but I do have some concerns that I was really hoping to get an understanding here 
my knowledge of psychotherapy is very limited, so I did a little homework online <clears throat> to try to get an understanding of what type of clientele might be coming past my yard. I have an eight-year-old daughter, so the idea of schizophrenics or, or uh, clientele of that type would make me very nervous. You know, they could be walking by or whatever. Well, let's go play with those kids instead of going to a therapy class. So I'm really here to get an understanding and raise the question, what type of clientele are we really talking about? So what her presentation did for me is it gave me a good understanding that it's more of a higher end professional. Uh, was it accident type? But I still, you know, it's like anything. You know, if you have a child, you've got to ask the question, what type of people are going to be coming into this community? You know, and that's my primary concern. Um, six or seven clients a day, you know, if, if you know, that's, that adds up. And you know, over a course of a month, that's a lot of people. As long as that question's raised and it's addressed, that's, that's all I'm really asking. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Grant, would you at this time come forward and respond purely to his concerns, please, for the benefit of all of us? I think you bring up a good concern because I think that a lot of people um, misunderstand what psychotherapy is. And, um, and it has a range, you can work with a range of populations. And so I don't work with people with a major mental illness like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Um, I don't work with people who um, have criminal records or are dangerous. Um, given that this will be a home business, this also brings my level of practice for my own safety. I'm single and I live by myself. And so I'm not going to have somebody who's going to put me at risk. I mean, I'm at the highest risk, you know, because I, you know, I have to make sure that I screen my clients well enough. Um, also, like I said earlier, um, and it may sound pejorative, but I don't bill health insurance, and so I get a different level of clientele um, who pay full fee for my services. So I work with people who have mostly relationship issues, um, people who m may have been traumatized as children but are, are very functional adults today. And um, I do, one thing that I neglected to say is that I get direct referrals from a lot of lawyers um, working on car accidents. <laughs> so, um, you know, I work with people like you and I who have had life problems and they want to know the roots of um, what's, you know, why they're feeling the way they're feeling. And also because the nature of my business is what we call fee for service, they pay out of pocket. I don't have long, long term clients. A lot of my clients are short term clients. So they're kind of in and out because um, at what my rates are, um, I can't afford me. So, um, so I have people that come, you know, for short-term therapy. So that also means that I'm not going to get the longer-term clients. In regards to the six or seven, um, maybe I was naive because I put the worst-case scenario of clients. I don't always see six or seven clients in a day. Um, yesterday I had three. Today I had four. No. I had three today in a, in a, in a small group. Um, some days I have seven clients and some days I have, you know, four, five. And, um, and right now, because I'm going more into a teaching mode, um, I'm, I'm hoping to get my client base actually smaller than what it is right now. So I'm in transition from where I've been practicing. Thank you for that response. Okay. Uh, just one point that with your further clarification of your client base and the number of times you or you meet with these clients, it only underscores Mr. Galino's point about educating them on that road. Absolutely. Somebody's there that's six or seven sessions, they get to the seventh or eighth session, they understand the road they're coming in and out of. But if it's going to be one time or twice, 
it's very important that they be educated. It's just a, uh, we just don't need a problem on that road. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Take further comments and opposition from the audience. Hearing none, uh, we did receive an email. I'd like to just briefly touch on the points of that. I think all the points that are mentioned we've discussed. So, uh, we did receive one email that is not in true opposition as described by the sender, if I'm correct. But did have some concerns, mainly about the nature of the business, the busy traffic on the roadway. Uh, whether this re request would encourage other neighbors to do the same. Uh, and then uh, about the sign, and uh, the applicant has already is indicated that she does not, will not be using any exterior signage. No further comments. We'll close the uh, session to public comment and open it for discussion by the board. How do we since the addition has not been built and I would assume an app uh, a permit has not been requested. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, how can we ensure that <clears throat> parking and access driveway egress concerns are met? Is there is there any way, Mr. Smith, that we should look at that as far as the pending building permit? Since that was a ma major concern, is the is the traffic flow on that? Street, or is this something you wouldn't normally do anyway? I guess you could put it in my hands to to uh, make sure the plan is followed. I assume you could approve the plan subject to improvements being completed. That's correct. Is your intention to? I assume your intention is to wait till the improvements are done before you start operating out of your home. If you're going to make any further comments, you need to come forward. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm going to wait. And uh, before I do, bef the the addition has to be put on before I operate a business. But also, my um, the contractor that I'm using, um, since I know nothing about construction, did come down and check all the ordinances. My understanding um, to make sure that. These plans are in uh, are congruent with all the variances. Who was the and, contractor? Uh, Mike Skirka. He came down and talked to you like the day before I came down, mm -hmm. and and I had asked you about if I needed to do the um, permit at this the time. So the decision was made to see if I get approved for the home business before I submit for the permit. Because I'm not going to do the addition if I don't get the permit. <laughs> Could I just have one further question for you? Sure. That is, um, can you live with a limitation that limits the number of cars on your property at any one time to three guests plus your own? Yes. Could you live with, could you live with any limitation on, on the hours? Uh, to perhaps um, move your hours. For, you're, you said you're currently um, seeing clients from 10 in the morning until 6. Uh, how significant um, an impact would that be on your practice if, if you were <coughs> until 5 o'clock? 
i think the general i guess i guess the general concern here is and one that i certainly share with with the rest of my colleagues here is obviously the the potential danger of going in and out of that that driveway and at the end of the day as mr. smith indicated the ability of this board or anyone else to police how people access your driveway is 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 minimal so and as the daylight erodes in the winter if people despite your admonitions should back out of there out of your driveway it it makes the the situation all the more onerous so is there any any possibility that you could limit your your practice to let's say five o'clock instead of six i could limit it but i think of it a little bit differently the way than you're thinking of it because five o'clock between five and six that's going to be when most people get out of work and so the traffic is actually going to be heaviest during between five and six versus at six um there will be less i would think that there would be less traffic for example if you're at 77 and highland ave at five between five and five thirty your car is pretty much backed to broadway if you go at 6 or 6.15, you're going through that traffic light because I do it all the time. So the bulk of the world gets out at 5 o'clock, so most people are going to be coming home between 5 and 5.30. If I have someone coming to my house at 5 o'clock and they're out at five or 6 o'clock, I actually think of it that there would be less traffic on the road. So, but I, if the board said, you know, you have to stop at five o'clock, I would consider it, but I would want to have a different range than maybe since most people go to work for eight o'clock, I would want to start earlier. And also that range that I put between 10 and six is currently there because it's a range. It's not like I see a 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five, six clients, you know, or five o'clock client. So I would want to bump, if, if you said only till 5 o'clock and that's absolutely what you need to do, I can do it, but I would ask if I could start at 9 o'clock in the morning um, or 8 o'clock. When you say from 10 to 6, you, that indicates that your last patient would be appointed at 5 o'clock. Is that correct? The last, the, yes, I end at 6 o'clock. So the last appointment that I have is 5 o'clock. I actually am a morning person, so... I prefer to work earlier and then end. And if, if that's the way it has to be, I can do it. You know, it's not going to. But, but I, would, I would just bump my hours earlier if, if, the, if the board says you have to. The earlier would, would sort of uh, resolve the issue as far as I'm concerned. The early, actually, I wouldn't. 8 o'clock would be better. 8 to 4. Okay, so. Or 8. Then you'd have, a, you'd have a span of daylight hours. I could do like 8 to 5. I mean, just to. You know, as a range, as you know, or nine to five. I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish. Oh, just that I can do a, I can do a different span, starting earlier and ending at five, if that's what was mandated for me. As as part of a restriction to the pending uh, approval, if approval is granted. Uh, we would like to put a, you put a range of 12 to 14 vehicle trips per day. Uh, we would prefer to indicate a maximum limit. Uh, 12 or 14, what would you like to see? Oh, well, I'd like the 14 just to have that comfort zone. Like I'm looking at maximum, not um, I'm looking at the maximum of what would happen, not the, the, um, what's that? Norm. Norm, or the average, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, personally, I don't have a problem with uh, the hours from 10 to 6. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. 
I think the nature of the business would be uh, uh, appropriate. I didn't hear any opposition to that. Uh, during the winter time, it gets dark at four anyway, so anything after four would be a concern. I think your concerns are valid. Uh, I personally don't have an issue with her requested hours of 10 to 6. Any other discussion? Yeah, uh, my major concern, once again, is the traffic one, and I have concerns about it's a relatively small lot, and the uh, parking area is relatively uh, limited. And in order to allow for a turnaround of a vehicle to move forward, I think you have to think about the number of vehicles at any one time on the driveway area. And I would strongly encourage us to consider a limitation on the number of vehicles on the property at any one time, especially since there's no off-street parking on that site. Um, uh, and I don't have a problem with 14 trips per day or seven customer visits per day, but when we're having group sessions, you know, uh, I would like to see it limited to three vehicles on the property at any one time and structuring your subsequent uh, patients so that, you know, you get some cars off the property before new ones come onto the property. Um, especially in the winter when you have snow banks and everything else, I just think it's a safety issue to start trying to park five vehicles, four or five vehicles in that space. It's um, my, excuse me. And, and as far as the um, uh, time of the day, I can live with eight to five or 10 to six, whatever the rest of you feel is appropriate. And my only other concern would be the signage. I think there should be an explicit condition of no signage on the, on the property. I agree. If you said three if you, cars. If you limited three car to, to three clients at any time, given time, that should cover that, right? Yeah, three vehicles at any given time. I mean, right. if she has three, three five, vehicles. Five, five right. patients come in one vehicle. Three time. vehicles, right. But if it's three vehicles at any one right. time on the property. So that's three and one in the garage? Three and three customer cars and one in the garage. In one, okay. Right. My understanding that own street parking is probably legal on that street. Is that correct? I don't think it's posted. No. It's typically nobody parks there because there's no shoulder. There's no shoulder, there is, really. But but there's no restriction from. I don't no. think it's posted now. I don't think we should be encouraging. It. No, I didn't <laughs> say that. But the statement was made that own street parking is not permitted. I don't think that. Oh, I'm I, I don't. I'm not sure that's a. There is on street parking on Pleasant. Yes. Uh, which you know, which is allowed, I believe. Um, any other comments? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess my the comment that uh, one of the people in the audience made about the uh, residential neighborhood, um, and that sort of comes up every time there's a home business uh, permit, and I, I think it's a legitimate question. Um, and again, just to make sure that I think the applicant and the audience is aware is what the town is trying to do um, is balance two opposing factors, and that is uh, give the, the uh, resident and the taxpayer the opportunity to do business out of their home without a minimal impact on the neighborhood and the town, which is why there is so much um, questioning about impact on the environment, impact on safety, impact on traffic. And is it going to be out of character with the neighborhood? And clearly, I think your, your business is a low impact uh, business. But any time you potentially have, you know, seven uh, different folks coming in, and going and having a, a uh, parking lot full of cars, even though there's a golf course down the street and there's a vegetable market down the street, it's still it's not a, a home. And there are homes on either side of your, your house. So I think, um, I think your application fits within the code uh, for residential C, in my interpretation. I do um, mirror the uh, concern about parking, and the reason I went back to the, by my reading your map, I think your, your parking lot is going to be 9 by 19, or 8 by 19. The code uh, recommended parking uh, for home businesses would be two spaces in addition to the required parking for the residents. Uh, I'm not certain that you can get three cars and still have a turnaround space in your, in your proposed enlargement of your driveway. <laughs> Sorry. My personal vehicle would be 
in the garage. And then there's parking on the side of the house that's existing right now. Mm -hmm. that, would, that would be one space. And then already existing, there's a little cutout area that you can parallel park or you can park head in. And then you could park another car behind the car that, say, would be in front of the garage. And that's three cars already. And what I'm adding is another space. But with those, that's my point, is that with, if you had those three cars there, would one of those cars have the ability to safely turn around? The well, the space that I'm adding. You're going to have 27 feet of width in, the, in this area here. Would you be having 27, 27 feet of width here? Well, I don't know how to answer that because... But I don't have. Mr. Friend, I don't have a. Add, is it rather than have park, somebody park in the driveway where it would block a turnaround? If three cars can park right. side by side. Yes, right. That's what I'm intending means to do. You need 27 feet because it's nine feet each. Then uh, any one of those three could back, could up back out. That's what. That's if what. I could draw what my idea was. <laughs> well, my idea your... was like if this was the parking, this is the current lot with here's the house. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, this is the current driveway right here with this little cutout area, and this is a, a, a walkway to my front door and the garage is gonna come, it's a setback, so it comes back. So if I add space here, people could come in this way and park like this, and when they leave, they can go out. And that, that was and my then, question. That, the width of that, where they pull in, if that's at least 27 feet wide, that'll meet the standard for three parking This places. way, right. This way. This way. From the walkway to the... From the walkway yeah. to here is right. 27 feet wide. How wide is it now for one vehicle right now? Or is it two vehicles wide? It's a one vehicle spot. One vehicle spot now. Can I you, have you, not a clue. Can you guarantee this 27 feet? 27 feet. you tell feet. the board that it's going to be 27 feet? So if I get approved and I go measure and it's not 27 feet, I won't go forward. You've got 69 <laughs> feet from the, from the edge of the pavement, or the edge of the road, property line to your single family dwelling. I would think you'd have plenty of room there. Yeah. Well, I'll admit to you that I'm a really good therapist, but I have no mathematical skill. <laughs> what our desire is on this is that and I think you can easily accomplish this with, uh -huh. your, with, with a, a planned out traffic flow in your driveway without turning your front yard into a commercial parking lot. That isn't our intent at all. But to have a, an unobstructed background. So people can pull in. Once they pull in, they have a place to back up and pull straight out onto Spurway. And I think that solved our concerns. If you would sense uh, construction and redesign of your driveway mm -hmm. is planned that you give extensive thought and 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 your architect or whatever well, let's let's maybe we can put it this way through the master plan I can either share 27 feet which means that three cars could park so they could back out up unobstructed or from the edge of the closest parking place to the garage is that there will be enough room for a car park there plus another car to back up and swing out. That's if fine. We can, if we can, it, that, and that will assure it. I can, I can assure that the plan will show that and that's what you'll put in. Do you... If that'll appease. Do you object to... Nope. ...incorporating that into your building nope. permit approval? Nope. Uh, I think that okay. issue, that satisfies me. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll speak for myself, not for the board members. As long as that is uh, incorporated into the design and the and the potential issuance of the building permit, that that an adequate background is preserved in addition to three dedicated parking places for the <clears throat> potential three clients. 
uh, that would satisfy my concerns as far as being able to back out and pull head forth into uh, Spurwink Avenue. That's my, my feelings. Is there any other comments, please? No further comments? Hearing none, there are five <coughs> points for voting, all five of which must be approved. Uh, again, a simple majority of board members present is required to approve each one of these conditions. I took it Hearing no further comments, we'll proceed to the vote. Point one, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All those in favor? Um, if we could just have one point of clarification. I assume we're voting on it based upon the subsequent modifications that we in discussed condition. in conditions. That's correct. Of three, three vehicles on the property right. at any one time. To get to the, I, am I correct that to get to the condition point, we have to approve you can you can do it either way, but yeah, that's customary. Would you feel more comfortable stating conditions up front? Yeah, I think it would okay, just good. be easier so we know what we're voting on. If you would, in relation to item number one, would you care to state your sure, concern as a condition? The, based upon the discussion and the applicant's um, consent or modification, I understand that the request is for a maximum of seven visits, uh, vehicle visits per day or 14 vehicle trips per day and a maximum of three vehicles on the property at any one time. In addition to her own. Th in, in addition. A, in addition. Own vehicle, right. Right. And, and you could make a third condition that the parking area be arranged such that vehicles have the room to park three and be able to turn around and drive out. Agreed. Okay. Are you satisfied with that? Yeah. Good. With those conditions in mind, uh, item number one, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item number two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, admissions to the air or other aspects of its design or operation. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. All those in favor? All in favor, none, no opposed. Uh, all five conclusions were approved. Um, in addition to the conditions that were already stated, uh, there will uh, an additional condition is that there will be no signage on the property. And uh, it's, maybe this is assumed that the construction will be, will, the proposed construction will meet the dedicated home business ordinance requirements. Maybe that's assumed as stated in the ordinance, and I assume that, that Mr. Smith will take care of that. May I have a motion? With I just you? offer one further modification that the hours of uh, operation will be limited to, I guess the final go around was eight to five, or? My understanding is there was a mix between the two, you know, one wants eight to five and somebody else said they didn't care if it was 10 to six so I'm not sure. We'll discuss that. Okay. Uh, I personally am in favor of, of 10 to six and I'd like discussion from board members to hear other 10 to six is opinion. fine with me but I understood it was Monday through Friday. That's correct. 10 to six Monday through Friday. I would propose that amendment. 
Well, I think that's in the application as proposed hours of operation. Can I have the flexibility of earlier and then move it towards where I don't work till six? Like, or do, is it going to be very specific I that I my uh, my hours are ten to six and then that's it and that's what I have to approve by or uh, your limiting <coughs> factor will be your vehicle trips per day. Right. So if you do nine to six, you're still limited to fourteen that's right. vehicle trips per day. That right. would give you more flexibility if you so desire in the winter hours to move it earlier. Right. I think that'd be in everybody's benefit. Am I correct in stating that? So really the hours, except going past six, is the issue. The early hours are not an issue. So if I move towards eight to four on some days, that's okay. Or if I even do nine to six, but I have like chunks of time in the day, I can do. I just want to get clear about what, because I want to, do what you want me to do. Well, but don't you have to again, state the, the range? Limiting factor is the vehicle trips per day. The vehicle don't you trips, have to state right? The range, though, in this. We, whatever range is determined will be a restrictive condition yeah. in your approval. Okay, so it would only be ten to six, and that's it. No, it can be nine to six or eight to six. Okay. The limiting factor is the, the number of trips. Vehicle trips, trips. Yeah. If we're okay, that's fine. But it gives you more flexibility in running your practice. That's right. That's that's what I'm asking. If I have two restrictions or just You've one. You've agreed to limit it to seven patients that's right. Uh, right. clients that's right. per day. Right. That's right. If we open it up for nine hours, you can't have any more than seven clients. That's right. I understand that. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I would modify my uh, amendment to indicate that the hours of operation would be limited to eight to six, Monday through Friday. Discussion? That's fine. One other point, but sorry, I got another point after that. Uh, a clarification. I don't know if her application requested and whether that matters at this. Ten to six on the application. Uh, does it state that in this? It states fourteen. I don't believe the hours it does. are requested, are they? I could be wrong. I don't see it on the actual application. Okay. Nevertheless, we can approve it then no, without the overriding the application. It's in the cover letter. It's in the cover letter. Okay. So the condition. And that's my current, but I. Okay, right. Okay. It is a current, so. Sorry. What is that, please? That's the current hours she quoted in our cover letter, so she didn't ask for 10 to 6. That's where it came from. Though. So what is the consensus then? Should we allow the applicant the flexibility of <clears throat> moving those yes. limited number of clients per day earlier if she so yes. desires? Since she's a morning person. I have no problem with that as long as it's indicated that the, a maximum of 17, uh, 14 vehicle trips per day was a maximum, as stated earlier, the other restriction. Mr. Smith, you it's, said you wanted to add something. You got it. You got it. That's, that was what I was going to bring up. Conditions as stated. May I have a motion? Um, I'll, I'll attempt a motion at the risk of uh, behaving not like a highly functioning adult this evening. <laughs> uh, in the matter of the application of Celia Grand, who is the owner of property located at 239 Spurwink Avenue, uh, described uh, in tax map U27 lot 20 that the named uh, applicant uh, application for conditional use permit to operate a home business be approved with the conditions as uh, as follows, which we have language for. Yeah. Which has already been stated. Yeah. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Seconded. All those in favor? Who seconded? Jim. I Jim. All in favor, zero opposed. The application is approved with conditions. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is communications. I have yes. none. Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. Communications. No. Thank you. 
We always Great. welcome those comments. Good comments. Thank you. Thank you. You should have you should have gone to the podium. To <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next meeting, July 26. I believe I'm correct. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved.